In section 2a, we talked about mutations that can occur in genomic sequences. In this section, we want to talk about how our cells deal with this problem. So what are the different things that can cause mutations? Well, there are lots of substances or environmental factors that can cause DNA damage. I've listed here a few of those. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but some of the more common things. Heat can cause mutations by causing the loss of the nitrogenous bases from a nucleotide or by causing deamination, converting one nucleotide to another nucleotide. Ultraviolet light causes the formation of dimers between two adjacent pyrimidine molecules, um, and this can be misreplicated then to create a mutation. X-ray irradiation can break the bonds between sugars and bases, causing loss of bases, or can break the bonds between nucleotides and the DNA backbone, um, thus introducing mutations into a DNA sequence. There are also a whole host of chemicals that can modify nucleotides by alkylating, methylating, or cross-linking DNA. This also leads to mutations in DNA sequences. Now, there are a couple of different ways that mutations are repaired in DNA sequences. The most common of these is what we refer to as excision repair. Now, excision repair uh, involves four different steps, and it's dependent upon a mismatch somewhere in nucleotide sequence. That is, there are two bases across from each other that don't hydrogen bond. That is, you, don't, you have a T with an A or a T with a G, something that doesn't bond together. Now, there's, there are enzymes in the cells which recognize these mismatches. Um, and these surveillance uh, molecules will recognize a mismatch and will initiate the excision repair process. The first thing that happens is there's an endonuclease, an enzyme which cuts DNA. And this creates a nick in the DNA on the 5' prime side of the damage, as shown here. Second, there's a 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease. Now, the 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease removes individual bases in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, as shown here. So this will remove a segment of nucleotides, including that uh, damaged DNA, as shown here. The third thing that happens is a DNA polymerase comes in and then it fills in the gap where there are no um, paired uh, nucleotides. In uh, mammalian cells, this is beta or epsilon DNA polymerase, as shown here. The last thing that happens then is DNA ligase comes and ligates those two segments of DNA together, as shown here. So now we've repaired, we've removed the mismatched nucleotide and replaced it by the correct base pairing uh, stretch of nucleotides. Now, DNA mismatches uh, present a unique problem, and that problem is how does, the, how does the DNA repair mechanism understand which of the strands has the correct nucleotide? You can imagine as in the sequence shown below here, there's a mismatch where you have a C that's paired with a T. How does the, the DNA repair mechanism know uh, which of those two is actually the correct nucleotide which will encode the correct protein? Prior to replication, the parental DNA is methylated. There, that is, there is a methyl group which is added to uh, various nucleotides on the parental st strand. The daughter DNA, that DNA that is formed um, in replication, is not methylated. And so that allows the, the DNA mismatch repair mechanism to recognize that strand as the strand in which the mismatched nucleotide is occurring. In the example that I show below here, you can see the parental strand, or the upper strand, is the strand that's methylated. And, uh, and so the DNA mismatch repair mechanism would recognize then that the correct nucleotide in, those mi in that mismatched pair is the C, not the T. The T is wrong, and, and that's the strand that would be repaired by the, by the enzymes in the mechanism. So that would be repaired then, as we've shown. That would become a G, and now you would have a correctly paired um, set of nucleotides. Now, there are things that can go wrong with DNA excision repair. Um, and the following clinical vignette illustrates a disease that results from defective mismatch repair mechanisms. This vignette is a, that of a six-year-old boy. He presents to a dermatology clinic. His parents are concerned by a number of wart-like lesions that have appeared on his nose and on his left temple. They also report that he's had abnormal spots of skin pigmentation that have increased in quantity and size um, throughout his life. A physical exam is performed and it reveals several, several different types of skin lesions. There are two exophytic wart-like lesions with central necrosis on the right side of his nose and on the left temple. He has patchy telangiectasia. He has hyperkeratosis, which is thickened skin on, the face and the, on his face and dorsum of his hands. And he has abundant freckles all over his body. The remainder of the physical exam is normal.
This is a picture of what this young man might look like. You can see the exophytic lesions and the abundant freckles um, in him. Basic laboratory studies are normal. A biopsy is taken of the left temple lesion, and that shows squamous cell carcinoma, a picture of which um, is shown below. So what is the disease that this patient has? This disease is called xeroderma pigmentosum. Xeroderma pigmentosum is an autosomal recessive disease that's caused by a defect in DNA excision repair. The specific enzymes that are affected in this disease are those which are responsible for repairing ultraviolet light damaged DNA. As a result, the patients who have this disorder are particularly sensitive to ultraviolet radiation such as that from the sun. Patients with xeroderma pigmentosum, or XP, present in childhood with a whole bunch of different dermatologic abnormalities. Um, these include things like freckles, telangiectasias, and hyperkeratosis or thickening of the skin. Most of these abnormalities occur on sun-exposed skin because this is the skin which has been exposed to uh, UV light-induced damage from the sun. These patients also have a tendency to develop skin cancers such as basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma um, early in childhood. Typically, these are diseases of elderly individuals, but they occur in children um, who have XP. There's no cure for this disease. Um, the best treatment is to avoid the UV radiation which induces the damage leading um, to the findings that we see in the disease. And so these children that have these diseases stay out of the sunlight or stay covered so that they don't have much UV exposure. In addition, there has to be vigilant surveillance for skin cancer so that they can be diagnosed and treated in their earliest stages. Now there are di other disorders that are caused by defects in excision repair. Um, and each of these diseases causes a sensitivity to a particular type of DNA damage because it affects enzymes which are responsible for repairing that type of damage. An example of this is Fanconi's anemia. Um, this disease is found in patients that are particularly susceptible to DNA crosslinking agents, uh, different kinds of chemicals that crosslink DNA and lead to mutations. In addition to um, the susceptibility, they have exhibit congenital skeletal malformations, progressive aplastic anemia, and they have a predisposition for developing leukemia, particularly acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, as a result of the mutations that they are sensitive to. Ataxia telangiectasia is a disease in which patients are susceptible to DNA damage caused by x-rays. The clinical signs and symptoms of this disease include progressive cerebellar ataxia and oculocutaneous telangiectasias. These are telangiectasias that are found on the eyes and on the skin. These patients are also immunodeficient and they're at risk for developing lymphoid malignancies. This is all a result of the fact that they can't repair damage um, that occurs to their DNA because of x-ray exposure. Now an additional aspect of DNA repair that needs to be considered is the regulation of the cell cycle. It's important that any DNA repair that occurs occurs prior to DNA replication. If it doesn't happen before DNA replication, then those mutations which have occurred will get replicated and propagated in all the daughter cells um, of the cells that divided. Now, there are checkpoints in the transitions of the cell cycle which prevent progression of the cell cycle if DNA damage exists. One of the major checkpoints is illustrated here, and this is the checkpoint between the transition from G1 to S phase. Remember, it's in S phase that DNA replication occurs. And so there are two proteins called RB and P53, and the job of these proteins is to ensure that S phase doesn't begin until all DNA damage has been repaired. So in the presence of DNA damage, these proteins are activated and they block progression of the cell cycle from G1 to S so that the DNA is not replicated and mutations are not propagated. Now there are defects in this particular part of the DNA repair mechanism as well in the RB and P53 proteins. Um, and one of these defects is illustrated in the following clinical vignette. A 15-month-old boy is referred to an ophthalmologist because he seems to be cross-eyed and his visual tracking is abnormal. His mother is especially concerned because his, the child's father had an eye tumor that was removed when he was a baby. Upon examination of the eyes, you see strabismus, unequal pupils, and mild proptosis or extension of the eye outside of the orbital cavity. A retinal exam shows absent red reflex on the right side, and in fact, if you look at the right retina, it appears to be white, which is a condition that we call leukochoria. Here's a picture of that. You can see in this child's left eye that the pupil is normally colored. 
But in the right eye, when you shine a light in, what you see is white, or leukocoria. What is the disease that this patient has? This is an inherited tumor predisposition disease, referred to as retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma is a rare malignant tumor of the retina, and it's caused by mutations in the RB gene, which is one of the genes at the G1 to S, or one of the proteins at the G1 to S checkpoint, which regulates progression of the cell cycle. When RB is defective, or when it's absent, the cell cycle is able to progress even in the presence of DNA damage. So this accumulating damage then, that's caused by propagating mutations, can lead to the development of tumors. About 40% of retinoblastomas are inherited, um, and you have to have a mutation on both alleles of the retinoblastoma gene in order to develop the, the disease. But these are inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion because only one of those uh, mutations needs to be inherited. The other mutation can be acquired um, as cells divide. And this is an example of what we refer to as Knudsen's two-hit hypothesis in cancer genetics. Inherited retinoblastoma is usually multifocal. That is, you get multiple tumors in both eyes. That is, it's bilateral. Whereas sporadic cases that, ca that are caused by two um, independent uh, mutations, acquired mutations, one in each RB allele, um, these only, usually only have a single tumor. And that's because it's extremely rare to acquire a mutation in both alleles. In those that have the inherited form of the disease, there's also an increased risk for osteosarcoma and other soft tissue tumors. The signs of retinoblastoma include an absent red reflex and or leukocoria, as we described. There may also be strabismus, unequal pupils, difference in the color of the iris, proptosis, increased tearing, nystagmus and or cataracts, a host of different um, ocular findings. Retinoblastoma used to be a universally fatal disease, but with modern treatment, including surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, the uh, mortality of this disease has been reduced to less than 10%. Now, there can be mutations in the p53 uh, gene as well, and this leads to an inherited cancer syndrome referred to as leaf rau mini syndrome. Similar to retinoblastoma, defects in this gene allow continued cell division even in the presence of DNA damage. There, that is, there is a defect in the checkpoint between the G1 and S phase of the cell cycle. Patients with this disease develop a lot of different common kinds of cancers, soft tissue sarcomas, for example, breast cancer, so on and so forth. But the key to this is they often develop multiple different types of cancer, and they usually acquire them at an earlier age than is typical for those diseases. This concludes the section on DNA repair.